Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard and this is Lap of the World. Now today's video is a little bit of a tangent, uh, something of a corollary or follow-on to the video I did a couple of uh, a couple of videos ago wherein I installed a fire extinguisher in this very Lamborghini Gallardo. That uh, generated a lot of great feedback in particular from the HPDRE Facebook group. I appreciate all of the information and input there. Uh, but one question I got in particular I wanted to actually talk about today, and that was, why didn't you just use one of these things? This is an element, if you're not familiar, this is an element solid state fire extinguisher, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> they are a newer thing on the market, I believe, although the technology has been around. And they are a, uh, you know, they're solid state, they're very small and compact and convenient. So why am I not using one? Why did I opt for the bulkier, heavier, two and a half pound halotron item? Well, let's pull over and I'll tell you why. So having found a quiet place to pull over here, let's have a little talk. So here I've got my two fire extinguishers in question and if I'm honest, probably also my thumbnail. But that being said, there's obviously some disparity here. This is my two and a half pound halotron that I've actually mounted in my car. And this is the element fire extinguisher that I distinctly considered putting in the car, but didn't. Now, why is that? First, I'm gonna cover this in three parts, but the first thing I wanna say is that I have no problem uh, or beef, or do I even question the effectiveness of these as far as their advertised claims of effectiveness at putting out a fire and their you know, method of delivery and method of packaging. I think it's extremely convenient. The form factor is great. If this is what you can fit in your car and you can't fit anything larger, then by all means, put it in your car. But the three things that I wanna to discuss today are really more in the context of kind of light track use or enthusiastic driving use versus casual road use. I think for casual road use, any of these things will work. For more enthusiastic use, there are a couple of things that I just, that shot through my mind and I could not reconcile with choosing the element extinguisher over the halotron extinguisher. They are really the intuitiveness of deployment, the handling, I guess is what I would call it, <laughs> and the ability to train. Um, so covering those on the first point, actually, let, let's go backwards here. So this, uh, my, my halotron extinguisher here is what I would consider, and I think most would consider a traditional fire extinguisher. Your, uh, you know, the dry chemical extinguisher that you can get for, you know, 20 bucks at a hardware store works the same way with a different extinguishing medium, right? You pull the pin, you squeeze the handle, the fire hopefully goes out. You know, up, you know, beyond that, it's technique and shooting at the base of the fire and, uh, you know, knowing what this is capable of versus the dry chemical extinguisher is capable of, but it's intuitive. And what that means is you can go, you know, this costs $200 near on, you know, after tax or shipping. Um, and uh, you know, that's not cheap. That might be prohibitive to somebody to train with this just to see how it works. But you don't really have to train with this because again, that $20 extinguisher from the hardware store works the same way. If you've never used a fire extinguisher before and need to know how, you can get one of those, you pull the pin, you squeeze the handle and you kind of feel what it's like and, and you get an idea for what it's about. Whereas with one of these, there's not really, I mean, short of maybe a road flare, which kind of has a similar principle, there's not really a way to train with something like this because it's, you know, it's a little bit unique in the marketplace. And once you've triggered it, it's, it's gone. You know, this can be refilled. I don't know how expensive that honestly is because I've never explored refilling it. Uh, I'll look that up and see if I can just put it in an overlay here. But 
this would be difficult to kind of train and figure out with, which is kind of leads to my next couple of points. With the, uh, again, the intuitiveness of using this is, I think, a selling point, in my opinion, because anybody could use it. Um, you know, if you're, you know, worst case scenario, like a, uh, you know, you have a crash, you're incapacitated and your car is on fire, any passerby could reach in and would understand how to work this immediately. Uh, the same token is, is something I'll demonstrate right here. Well, I'm not going to demonstrate it completely. I'll not squeeze the, uh, squeeze the button. But holding this with one hand, if I can get it out of its cradle, I can thumb this pin out, and it's ready to go. I just have to squeeze this down, and it would go off. Um, I'm not going to do that because <laughs> obvious expense. But... Uh, and then even if it's, uh, you know, if I've got it, even if, even if it's like it's, it's stuck in its cradle in the car, uh, if I go out for a track session, I'll pull the pen before I go on the track. And at that point in time, let's say I'm, you know, maybe I have a mechanical and or an off and I've slid close to a, uh, you know, tire barrier on the driver's side. There's some potential that I couldn't get the door open to get out quickly. Fire breaks out. I can just reach over and give the handle a squeeze, even if I can't get the extinguisher out, and that might buy me the extra couple of seconds that I need to get out of the car without being burned. Um, also, along those same lines, I have 100% I, I have autocrossed against a gentleman who literally only has one arm, uh, which means he can, you know, again, no problem, right? You just thumb the pen out, squeeze the handle, it's great. That is where... I kind of have my biggest problem with this is that there is no way that I can discern to gracefully operate this with one hand, uh, you know, one appendage, we'll call it. You know, you just hold it between your legs, do some other stuff maybe, but to operate this, you have to pull the top cap off to expose the striker. Then you have to pull the bottom cap off to take the, uh, to expose the other half of the striking. This is kind of like a match almost. This is your you know, box striking surface, and this is the tip of your match right here, and you'd scuff this across here, and that would trigger this to go, and then it would burn for 50-something seconds uh, and probably do a great job putting your fire out. But I don't think you can do that one-handed, and certainly not under duress. Uh, I have a friend of mine who is a SWAT captain, and uh, I've asked him advice before on, uh, you know, uh, boomsticks, because I'm not going to say that word on my channel, and a big point he made when advising me on like what to get for a person who was a new, uh, new owner at the time was get something that you have to do the least to get into action. Because when you're in panic mode, somebody's broken into your house in that case, or in this case, maybe you've had an accident, you've been thrown around, hit in the face with an airbag, start to smell smoke, your you know, fine motor skills and your ability to do tiny manipulations and uh, you know, uh, accurate manipulations of things is one of the first things to go. So being like, holy crap, it's on fire, I can't get out, let me fiddle, you know, let me pull this off, pull this off, accurately strike this, and then I have a thing to extinguish a fire, you know, versus, you know, thumb squeeze. Yeah, which leads me to my second, which is now my third point, which is what I would call the... Uh, I'm going to call this the infomercial scenario. And that is, what if when you go to deploy this thing, you pull it out of its bracket and you go to do it, and what if you fumble this cap? <laughs> this is the only way to set this thing off. Like, okay, you got the other cap off. If you fumble this thing, you know, I don't know if there's another, uh, you know, what else can you strike this on? Can I, you know, can I Western movie style just, you know, will that, will that light one of these things? I'm not sure. I doubt it. Um, but, <laughs> so yeah, uh, kind of bringing this whole full thing full circle. So those are my three main points is that, you know, you can't handle this with one hand that any graceful way that I can think of. And, and please, if you're a rep for Element and you know of a way to do this, or if you have an alternate product that is, uh, you know, single arm wieldable, then please leave a comment. Um, you know, but also, you know, how do you strike it? So, yeah, so there's three ways of, you know, can I use it with one, one hand? I don't think so. Um, can I use it under duress? Can I guarantee that I can get this thing into action when I've been hit in the face with an airbag, turned upside down, whatever the case may be, worst case scenario? 
can I get it into action then? There is a question mark there. Maybe so, but there's a big question mark. And that leads to the last point of, if there's a question mark on that and I would need to train to be able to use this accurately, I can't really do that because it's not really a traditional form factor. Uh, you know, there's, <laughs> for better or worse, there's a reason that almost every fire extinguisher is made like this. So there you go, that's my spiel. Do with this information what you will. Again, I have no problem with the technology and the premise and concept behind these, and I'm sure that they work, just maybe not for me. So thanks again for following along on what I think was, as advertised, a little bit of a tangent, but it's a video that I did want to make since I had, in fact, gone through this thought process myself uh, and figured it would be worth sharing. Again, my intent here is not to uh, you know, throw any shade or draw any products into question because I think, uh, you know, the element and solid state fire extinguishers like it certainly have their place. Uh, but I did want to explain my rationale as to why that's not the direction that I went. But <laughs> that's where I'm going to leave it. As you're watching this, I should be on my way up to uh, northern Ohio to visit Nelson Ledges. I'll be in the NSX for that trip. Uh, if you are in the area, I'll be at Nelson Ledges between like 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. on the 26th, uh, and then somewhere between Knoxville and there in between. But with that said, uh, if I see you at the track, great. I will see you at the track. Otherwise, I'm Richard. This is the Lap of the World, and I will see you in the next video, if not out at Nelson Ledges. escape this parking lot before the rest of the sprinklers go off. <laughs>